feel like sometimes life is really mental. Dude, that's actually a really good name for a podcast. <laughs> I've been rejected a lot. It's just kind of like a, like a regular thing that you go through as a musician in the beginnings. You get rejected, you get those kind of things, but I think those things just kind of gave me more fire to work harder. Hey everyone, welcome to Really Mental, where everyone should know that no matter who you are, you're not alone. Today we have an awesome episode for you with our friend Juni, who is an incredible artist, singer, songwriter, who is living in Seoul, South Korea, and is originally from Canada. He has a pretty amazing story, and we're really excited for you to hear it today. So if you enjoy this episode, make sure to rate it five stars and send it to a friend. And also make sure you connect with us on socials at Really Mental Podcast. So really excited to hear what he has to say today and to just hear him talking about mental health and, you know, what it's like growing up for him. So without further ado, we're going to hop into it and we're going to welcome Juni to the show. For those who don't know a lot about you, who are you? Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, I'm a singer-songwriter. I'm in Korea now. I am from Vancouver, Canada. And yeah, I've been here for about five, I think it's been like five years now, four or five years. And I write songs for myself and I write songs for others. I recently went on a North America tour and a Europe tour. And very recently, I released a song. <laughs> very cool yeah definitely for everyone listening you have to go check it out it's going to be out already it's invitation feet geiko i love the song man and i think that it's really cool to see you like evolve as an artist and i know visually too like i love the creative view of come out with when it comes to taking it back and just you know when you first got to korea like from a mental perspective like what was that move like oh it's it was, to be honest, if I was able to do it, like if I was supposed to do it again at this time of my life, I, I can't, I can't do it. Just that drive I had and like the, the motivation I had just got me to come here and it was scary, you know, and to think about it, but I think I was just enjoying the moment and enjoying the new atmosphere and just being living in Vancouver for so long, my whole life basically, and coming to a different city, a different country, you know, I think that just got me all... That just gave me butterflies, you know what I mean? It's like a new life that I'm taking in and there were so many creative, talented people around me at the time and they motivated me as well. And it's just, you just gotta live in Seoul to really feel what Seoul is like. And it's very similar to New York. Everything's busy, everything's very congested and everyone's just kind of, you know, on their grind. And I wanted to be a part of that and I enjoyed it. That's really cool. And do you think it's really shaped you, like being in Seoul now, that's really shaped you as an artist and your process? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, if you live here, you just kind of become uh, a person here. Uh, I didn't imagine myself becoming this much uh, of a Korean, like a natural Korean person, (laughs) if you know what I mean. Like, um, yeah, but it just gets you, you know, and you become a part of this culture and being a part of it it's it's just so much fun and um i think it if it wasn't for the energy and 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 the and the drive these people had i don't think i would be here right now yeah i think that's really cool that i mean on one side of it like taking the leap of faith to go from your home to korea your new home and then also being able to like adjust to that. And I guess what comes to mind for me is like, you were talking about that drive that you had back then. How has that changed with where you are now and this new music you're putting out? What's your purpose? Um, in terms of music, I mean, um, the objective is didn't really change, it's still the same. I mean, I wanna make good music and I wanna make music that people can relate to and enjoy. I think that that's just a set stone but I think just the mentality of everything, you know, as you grow older, as you experience new things, and the more you experience, you, you, you have new fears and things that you don't want to lose. When you're young, you really got nothing to lose, to be honest. Like, you're just starting off and you're just doing this and you don't really care and you're more, what do you say? Like, you're more just up in everybody's face, but... Nowadays, you just kind of, you figure out what life is and you figure out what everything's like. And I think that kind of changed me to what I am now. And I'm more calmer now. I'm more, um, 
I'm less hot headed <laughs> and I feel like I enjoy life more. Awesome. I wanted to talk about dealing with rejection today a little bit and ask you throughout your journey with music and kind of moving from Canada to Korea and this whole journey, like, have you dealt with rejection? And if so, how did you kind of manage that? Yeah, I mean, when I was, you know, just starting off in Canada, I started music in Canada. I started music in Vancouver. And yeah, I've, I've been rejected a lot. It's just kind of like a, like a regular thing that you go through as a musician in the beginnings. You know, you want to perform at a certain place. You want to headline a certain place and you want to open for a certain artist. You get, you get rejected. You get those kind of things. But I think those things just kind of gave me more fire to work harder. And I just thought, oh, maybe I'm just not there yet. And if I'm not there yet, then, you know. It's not like I can't be there. Why can't why can't I do it? I'll be able to do it if I keep working on it. So I was just had I had a positive mind and attitude, and I think that just comes from just how I was growing growing up, and just I don't know, just my parents just taught me to be positive all the time. I guess I, and when I came here to Korea, um, you know, a lot of a lot of a lot of people just kind of accepted me with open arms. To be honest, it wasn't that much of a hard kind of thing, except for just like money stuff everything else is just kind of like it was an easy going experience in korea to be honest it was it wasn't very there wasn't much of a rejection kind of thing it was more of constructive criticism it's interesting to hear i guess just your journey overall because people listening will see the version of you that is you know on stage performing or like in these huge music videos with big songs and so i think it's cool generally just to like um get your perspective and like understand that like it's okay to you know not always even feel certain and like you had a positive attitude so what would you say was your lowest point as a musician and a human and how did you get through it so just kind of figuring things out in the first year in korea i didn't really know what i was supposed to do because i i had only had uh, six months to figure out my plans here because I it's I, I came here as a tourist visa I didn't have a business visa or, or whatever and so you only have six months and then you have to get out of the country and right now at this state like I would have been so stressed out like I would have been freaking out and stuff like that but at that time I wasn't I was just constantly just making music and just just figuring like I wasn't worrying at all I was like oh something's gonna happen something's gonna happen and I just kept looking up and looking forward and just kept making music I literally made like like five to ten songs a day like it was just kind of that's all I did you know because you I lived in a studio I didn't live at a home I didn't live in a small like apartment or anything I lived in an actual studio where everything the room is the whole room is treated and it's literally it's probably like a quarter size of an average bedroom so it's very very small and that's all you can really do there you go outside and there's different rooms where everyone's living like that in Korea I mean just it's a it's a crazy mess hot mess out there but I did that I lived I lived there and all I did was make music you know and I got the opportunity to just work with different people and these different people got my music out like heard out there yes yeah, sick and like for you now like you mentioned now you wouldn't be able to handle that like what changed in that to make that experience kind of more anxiety inducing or scary for you now but now I mean cuz you just got a lot to lose you know what I mean you you go through experiences you have these certain experiences that you have and you build so much and the more you build around your career or your life doesn't really have to be anything drastic it can just be you're living more uh, each day the each day you live there's more to lose i feel like i feel like that's like it's like that for me and since there's something to more to lose you're scared of going head to, uh, face to face with you know danger basically and my danger thinking back at it now was damn i was literally like i was nearly deported <laughs> like i was nearly kicked out of the country right so i'm thinking back at it now so just those kind of things i had no i think sometimes that's why i think it's easier or it's better for you not to know too much when you're going through certain things in life especially when you're young it's better not to know like the details and just go for it and just you know say f it and just do your thing but, you know, the more you get older, the more you you become wiser and you know more about the little things. And then the more you do that, you get scared to get on a roller coaster. So it's I think that's what I think that's why I've changed in that sort of way. But at the same time, if you look at it 
look at it the, on the other side the more you get wiser you know the more calm you get and the more less stress you have with certain bs that comes in your life and so there's there's the ups and downs i feel like totally i mean when you think back would you say that like there's a certain age when you have to get your stuff together I, there's no i don't think there's a limit to it you know what i mean once you really figure things out and you get things going you're just going to automatically start learning things but i don't think there should be a limit to that you should enjoy life as much as you can as long as you're good and you're not you're not affecting your surroundings in a negative way as long as that doesn't happen as long as it's just you and you're just trying to enjoy life go for it i mean it doesn't matter how old you are i think it's more of you need to have these experiences for to, in order for your, yourself to realize oh this is this is the right way to go this is the wrong way to go and so yeah i mean i have friends who are much older than me and they and they're still enjoying <laughs> they're enjoying life more than me to be honest they're just <laughs> yeah like you see these people like that and i'm like especially in korea though korea has a certain kind of what do you say man there's a certain way they look at people who don't get have things figured out in a very negative mm -hmm. way and i think sometimes like yeah i respect their opinions but they should respect how a certain person lives in a certain way and everyone should just respect how it like it, it no one should be crit critiquing or criticizing on you know how they're living you know what i mean how others are living and, um, like i said if it's not if it's affecting them in a negative way then yeah there's some there's there's something to say but if it's not like that and if they're just enjoying their life the way it is and no one's being affected by it then just leave them alone kind of thing so yeah i see both sides of it in korea a lot uh, there's a lot of musicians who are like that like they're just very free and they're they don't really care and they're just having a great time but outside of that there's a lot of people who are stressed about the pressures of you know getting married and having a career and just kind of you're hitting like before you're 30 you gotta like make, make this much money and there's certain things like that in korea so i see both sides and i i say i just i respect both and you know whatever makes you happy do you feel like being a musician and being a creative in, is accepted in korea oh for sure nowadays it's kind of like in, in, in I think like elementary school kids like the number one thing they want to become is like a youtuber <laughs> it's not it's not it's not the day and age of oh, i want to be a doctor or a lawyer or you know you know <laughs> like it's not like that anymore it's more of oh i want to be a k-pop star i want to be a youtube content creator i want to be a film director i want to be the next like bts it's like that's like the that's what these kids are dreaming about and i think it's great you know it pushes art forward and the level of these kids what they see when they grow up the level of content they see it's going to be much higher so when they grow up and they start working on their own craft it's going to be it's going to start at a different place than what it what it used to be and i totally. think that's awesome yeah and i and i think that's a way for korea to really evolve into get into that same level of what it's like over out there in you know in, in europe or us or anywhere else in the world yeah, I love that. And that's like, you know, it's bigger than just one cast and two. And I love that what you know people are doing with their careers can actually inspire others. And it's like a good perspective moment. Would you, do you ever think of that? Like when you're releasing your music that it's inspiring people or is it just such a personal journey that it's like hard to comprehend like that side of it? I don't know. I, it's hard for me to say like, oh, my music inspires people. You know, <laughs> that's that's what I do. I it's I can't say that. I just want people to enjoy. Claim. Yeah, it's it it is definitely as an artist, and I just I always I always just want to make good music, and I want people to enjoy the music. That's one thing, for sure. Like that's like the most important thing, and and I want people who listen to my music to know who I am as a person as well. That's why I try to do that a lot. I try my best to do that. Incorporate a little piece of myself, just the human me, in, into my music. So. If you enjoy my music, then you'll enjoy me. It's that kind of vibe. 
if anyone listens to my song and wants to start music or you know it inspires them to do something i mean that's awesome I, i'd love that and i'd be honored to be a part of that and but i can't i can't go out there and say that it's it's I'm an inspiring artist. I can't say that. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned that you put a bit of yourself in to the songs. I wanted to ask, like, who are you then if you put that in there? If you listen to my music, it's if you listen to my discography, there isn't, it, it isn't just one certain vibe. I, I have a very diverse discography, and I think that just comes from being a songwriter as well. And I just love telling stories, and there's just so many things I want to talk about. So through, like if you listen to all of these things, it just it shows you what kind of person I am as I'm I'm very round. I take in rather than just kind of ma- like change people. I rather take in that person like and be a part of that rather than kind of just be a leader and just get everyone to become like me. You know what I mean? There's certain people like A or B or C whatever, but I'm just that certain type of person who absorbs different people's energy and i kind of talked about that a lot descriptively in my album as well called blanc just thought of myself as a as a canvas and thought about the people around me the people that is that that influence me as just like strokes of color and paint and everything all these colors that it's painted in the canvas becomes who i am and yeah so that, that's how i kind of describe things and that's why my music is very diverse and has it can go from literally like soft R&B to like hip hop like it can go from pop to you know like a very folky like acoustic song so it just kind of yeah. shows kind of shows my personality and what I'm like that's awesome would you say that with the music you're making obviously you're expressing a lot through that creatively how else do you like express yourself I would love to be an artist, you know what I mean? I would love to paint and stuff like that to express my feelings, but I can't. <laughs> I was I'm really interested in just like watching movies and just, you know, film basically. I'm very interested in that. I'm I'm interested in I'm interested in just watching actors work and how they portray characters and stuff like that. That's very interesting to me as well. That's why I base a lot of my songs around movies that I watch. I take my stress out a lot on like sports games. I play FIFA a lot, so <laughs> that's oh, like pretty much what guy. I think about. Yeah, but that's pretty much it, man. Um, music is literally everything I do, and only thing I do that's really important, <laughs> uh, except eating food and just kind of ha- getting my sleep. I just want to ask, like, how do you ensure that your identity and who you are isn't attached so heavily to music as a kind of practice and as a job, like? If music went away, what would you do? Are you content with yourself without music? I don't really know, to be honest. This is like an honest answer that I can give, but I really don't know if if music didn't exist or if I wasn't a part of music anymore, what I what what would I do? What would I be? Honestly, I don't know, man. Music's got me to do everything. Music got me a house. It got me a studio. It got me a life. And to not be a part of it, I think that would be a very big It'll take a very big effect in, in my life for sure. And like mentally too. Hope that never happens. <laughs> Hope that never happens. But yeah, I I've, I've been focusing on all the all the perks and the good things that's that music's been giving me throughout my life. So I've never really thought of it that way. Well, I'm glad that you've never had to think about the exit and hopefully that never happens. So that we can keep getting yeah. all your music and the new stuff. I guess when it comes to like touring then and like and doing everything that comes with music how do you balance that and sort of find time for yourself as well yeah honestly i thought i'd be super super exhausted when i came back from a tour i thought i'd probably not want to be involved with music for a while because you just it's like a everyday thing right you do a show you get on a plane go to a different city do another show and that happens a lot and when I came back home surprisingly enough I wanted to go in the studio and just work on new stuff and that's just because all the energy that I got from the fans and just being able to be you know feel actually just to be able to feel the the like the the gratification from the fans that that made these songs and I'm performing it and it just kind of 
that energy is so different from just seeing a comment or like a message. You know what I mean? It just hits differently. And that, that energy I've never felt before. And when I, when I got that, I wanted to just go back in the studio and start working a little bit more. And, and I did that. And it's been fun. And balancing it, it's not even that hard anymore. It's just more of if my body can take it. <laughs> and uh, I try not to, you know, I try to stay off the, you know, caffeine, just stuff like that, just for health purposes. But sometimes you just kind of, you get that adrenaline from like, just from excitement, you know, like, and it just comes out of you. And I think that's already enough energy for me to just keep, just keep moving forward and creating new music and just being a studio, having sessions and then go out, go out overseas and do a performance and just do that. And I think that's like, I just live in, live in a dream, right? So there's really nothing to complain. That's amazing. Do you ever feel pressure to go and party or be, you know, that person with where you are now? Or like, do you feel like you're just able to be comfortable? I think I found the right piece. I think I found the right spot to how I want to live here. In the beginning, yeah, I was I was very pressured to go out. You know, you're supposed to go out and make connections, network, and sometimes uh, you see like a group of artists and they're just you know they're they're like a group of friends right and what they do and what they like and what they do outside of the music they, if it doesn't fit with me it doesn't fit with me and i kind of accept it now but yeah a long time ago i was like oh sh should i be out there should i be having a great time like should i be going out to clubs and stuff and meeting people but if it's not me then why why would i have to do that you know what i mean so it's just like I kept asking that and I was like, why do I have to do that? Just because that's what the culture is like? No, like I'm going to do me. And if people really mess with me, if they really like me, if they want to work with me, they would just go out with me and have a cup of coffee, not in, in, during the afternoon, not, you know, I'll see you at a club at like late at night. It's just, you know, respect to what people like have their opinions and what they enjoy, but it's just not me, you know? And I think I found the right spot now being here for a, a few years now. My friends, I found friends who are like myself or people uh, or I have friends that respect who I am for that. Yeah, 100 percent. I wanted to ask uh, to kind of two questions, one on how do you found music to be your passion and what mm -hmm. that feels like and what it is to actually find something and be truly passionate about it? I think it's so difficult to find what you want to do in life and especially as a career you know i have friends my good friends back from high school they they were they were trying to figure things out and it was hard for them as well and i totally understand what that's like i just that's why i was very fortunate enough to you know figure it out in an early age but i think that has to do with just what my brothers taught me they did that as well my brothers figured out what they want to do at an early age and they they went for it and then i think that what that's what motivated me to do music as well if, if it wasn't for my brothers then i would have been very hesitant on making music as my career choice but yeah i think it's just from the surroundings but people I, I had around me and what my brothers showed me and also what my parents they 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 believed in what i could do and it all just leads to, yeah, like my family, they, they're the number one reason why I was able to do music. And um, they've influenced me at a young age to listen to Korean, like K-pop, early K-pop, as well as what was hot during in Canada and like the Billboard hits and stuff. So because of that, I was able to become a songwriter like right now and to work here. And yeah. <laughs> It's just everything, I'm just, yeah, because of everything I was able to, that I've had a solid foundation back at home, I was able to just really figure things out. I enjoyed singing as well. I enjoyed performing. And then that kind of brought me back memories when I started going on tour. I started realizing, oh, this is exactly what I want to do. So that motivated to be motivated me to push as an artist more than a songwriter as well. What would you say... What would you say to the person listening that is, I guess, listening to music? I just want them to know that I made that song, whatever that song that may be, that's by me. I made that song to to satisfy the listener and to and to give that listener a certain that a picture of an experience I had or experience I felt. 
And if they go through, if they click my profile after listening to the song and listen to my discography, I want them to know that I'm just a guy who's in love with music and just making music. You know what I mean? Nothing really, nothing else. Like, I just want them to be like, oh, this guy just loves making music. Like, that's <laughs> like that's what it is. And that's all his life is. And I think I've, tr- I've, I've tried my best to really portray that in, in my songs. And, like, I want to also add in, like, what you said about the waves. You know, it's like there's ups and downs on everything. And if you're only going to be focusing on all the ups and what's what the good's happening to you then obviously it's going to have a mental like it's going to be mentally very struggling and like hard but for me like you said like my recent invitation drop yeah it's doing great and it's doing so well and everyone's really enjoying it but at the same time it's just like i'm gonna have a neutral response for every release i have no matter what this how well the song does or bad the song does that's how i keep myself kind of sane (laughs) And that's why I know, oh, this invitation is doing well right now. Maybe the next drop isn't gonna, but that wouldn't affect, that shouldn't affect me. The most, the most important yeah. thing is the fact that I'm able to release a song and have people want to hear it. Fans want to hear it is the most important thing. And that's how I keep myself sane. Even I find that like, it's cool to hear as an artist because I feel like for me, sometimes I get too caught up in, say if I'm like a, even a feature on a song and it's like, I don't know, like the label maybe messes it up and it doesn't do as well as I had hoped for that artist mm-hmm. or the, the baby we created. Mm-hmm. I find it like tough sometimes to like be okay with that. But the good thing is that music is teaching me obviously like that things aren't perfect, right? And so that's actually right. like a good skill. Like I think mm-hmm. you can get mad at that or just accept it. And I don't know it's cool to hear from another artist like that you're able to like have that side of it because sometimes it is tough. Oh yeah, dude. Obviously, I can't. Like, I'm not. I'm not saying that I don't go through that and like oh, I'm very like positive minded all the time. Obviously, you you get caught up and that's what it is, you know. Because we're based on numbers, man. Like we're based on the the audience and and how yeah. much reach we have. And that's so important. Obviously, it is important, but. I'm just trying to say, I'm just trying to send a message of where at least, even at least if there's one person that really loves you, loves your music and supports you, I think mm-hmm. that's like, you've made, you've made something there and you got something. And if one person, you can make one person do that, then why not of you having tens and thousands of millions of people do that for you? It's just, it's just going to be one day that's going to happen. Like, don't don't like hurt yourself too much over it. I love that. So if you're listening, remember to follow through with your dreams, whatever that is, make sure you follow through and, and hold on to that, that passion that you started with. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time as well. And thank you for being so honest and open about your journey. Thank you, man. No, it was, it was a pleasure. It was so much fun. So, well, I think it was really interesting to get some of Juni's opinions on his experience in the music industry and how he got to where he is today. I think one of my biggest takeaways was this pressure and need to go out, especially when working in entertainment. And, and I know Juni said that he doesn't really do that that much and he had to figure out how to still not compromise on his work, but also hold who he is. And I think his advice of like surrounding yourself with people who value you and won't judge your decision to not go out or not to do something because that's you is like a really important thing because just because everyone else is doing something doesn't mean you have to do it as well. If you don't want to do it, that's totally fine. And I think that's just a good overall advice for people listening today to take away because a lot of people will expect you to go out. A lot of people will expect you to do a bunch of stuff, but Juni's a living example. He's an example of what you can do where you can be successful without having to do what everyone else is doing for their careers. So with that, just wanted to say thank you everyone for making it this far be sure to rate it five stars and follow us at Really Mental Podcast on all of our platforms. Be also sure to support Juni in his music career and on his socials as well. And we'll see you next week.